Ladies and gentlemen, sit back and enjoy Mega Meeple. Greetings and welcome to the Mega People, the show all about gamers and the games that bring them together. This is episode 70, and uh, thank you so much for hitting that download button and listening in on our little uh, little conversation here. If you're new to the Mega Meeple, welcome. Everybody is welcome here at the Mega Meeple Gaming Table. And if you haven't already, uh, go check out the website. That's www.themegameeple.com. All of our previous episodes stream there, as well as some news and reviews. And if uh, you go to our social media page, there's all the links to all the social media craps that uh, you could uh, like and follow and interact with me. And if you are a game designer or you have a game that's coming out, and you'd like to be a guest on the show to talk about your game, uh, just go to our Contact Us page on the website, fill out the little fields on there, and uh, hit Submit. And it will shoot a little email straight to me, and uh, I will get back with you, and we'll see about uh, scheduling you on to one of these episodes. If you haven't already, uh, go to iTunes and subscribe. Put out some of the five-star loving and uh, leave us a little happy review. That does quite a bit. And if you really like the show and you uh, want to support what I do here, just uh, go to either our Pod Pledge or our Patreon page. Uh, you know, hey, just just a dollar. That goes a long way. Uh, tw- 20, 20 listeners donate a dollar. That takes care of the Lipson costs of hosting and, and getting to the uh, thing. And, uh, I mean... The podcast and my content is always going to be free, but if you want some kind of the the, uh, the exclusive stuff that uh, I have, then uh, the only way to get access to that is to uh, either be a Patreon or a Pod Pledge supporter. That's the only way. The podcast and the YouTube channel and stuff like that, that that's always going to be free. And if you're unable to uh, support us that way, uh, there's a way you could support the Mega Beeple, and it won't cost you one cent. Not even a penny. Won't cost you anything. And that is just tell all your friends about the show. Be it the podcast or the website or uh, the the YouTube channel or even if you see me on the Dice Tower Board Game Breakfast, tell your friends, hey, check out that guy. He's crazy. Word of mouth goes a long, long way. And I appreciate that. Just as much as I appreciate all the uh, uh, supporters on Patreon and Pop Pledge. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who even just, just listens. I mean, hell, when I started this uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, I, I, I didn't know uh, how many people was going to listen. And now I'm, I'm getting literally a good few, uh, a few, few uh, hundreds of uh, downloads per week per episode so that that's just that's just incredible so thank you all for listening and i hope that i bring a well, bring, bring a smile to your face and the uh, typical drudge of the the daily ins and outs of the world because that's what it boils down to just getting together playing games having fun well i have a really great guest uh i mean i, I like to think that i always have a great guest but uh, this episode, I have Andrew Bosley, who is an artist. In fact, uh, if uh, you've seen Everdale or you played Everdale, I know uh, from the social media stuff out there, there's plenty of people playing that game. And uh, Starling Games just finished up a Kickstarter uh, for the expansion to Everdale. I'm going to have a, a review of Everdale coming to my YouTube channel, so uh, stay tuned for that. But The guy who drew up all the little cute critters for Everdale is Andrew Bosley. He's going to be with us today, and he's going to be talking about that. Uh, He's going to be talking about uh, just uh, all the other games, not only board games, but video games that he's done artwork for. So what do you say? Let's uh, get right to the interview and uh, find out more about Andrew. Well, 
this is a first here on the Mega Meeple podcast. Uh, usually, I, we when we have a guest on, we it's it's pretty easy because it's like we you know it's a game designer and we talk about hey, uh, tell us about the game and they talk about how the winning conditions and the, the mechanics and well, this is a a bit of a challenge, but you know it's something that uh, I think uh, everybody would be interested in, and uh, I know I'm interested in it. So uh, it's it's like, uh, hey, it's my podcast. I, <laughs> I can do <laughs> so, self serving in a sense, but uh, we have Andrew Bosley with us. Who, if you haven't uh, if you haven't dug deep into the uh, the uh, the staff uh, with things like Everdale, well, he's the artist of that beautiful game Everdale. He's the guy who did all those old cute critter cute critters. Uh, so, Andrew, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate your uh, availability and and coming on. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, we'll we'll see how uh, vivid we get with the uh, the description of your art. But at at the very least, we'll have uh, links to your uh, to your website and to your uh, portfolio and stuff like that. So, if people want to find out more about those uh, cute critters or even some of the uh, uh, the other things you have here, and you kind of delve in quite a few things. Uh, you know, the lighthearted, happy, and then uh, more the o- ominous, uh, darker realms. So, and that's that's uh, that that appeals to my darker side. There, I love that <laughs> stuff. So, but but let's let's start at the beginning. How how did you, what what uh, how did the art bug bite you, and how did you get started in art? Um. Gosh, uh, I mean that's that was just uh, early on uh, when I was a kid. Uh, it was just I think I had the typical artist uh, grown you know grown up story. I had very supportive parents that encouraged me. Um, I uh, I did a lot of stuff in in school and participated in different uh, art type events. Um, I thought I was pretty hot stuff uh, when I was in in elementary and middle school and even into high school and then went to college and and realized that uh, I had uh, I had lots and lots and lots to learn and everybody I was surrounded by much better artists that uh, that uh, <laughs> went through the same sort of thing uh, um, but uh, I, I always had a love for for drawing um, uh, for, for the longest time so it was, uh, I, you know, I, I, I didn't exactly know where I was going to go with art. I didn't, but I didn't have any other particular skills that, uh, that would send me <laughs> in a, in a different direction that would seem to be more appropriate. But, uh, uh, but no, I, it was just something I, I always did. I had a, always had a clipboard with me with a stack of paper and a pencil and I really couldn't be seen anywhere without that. And, uh, yeah, that was, uh, and uh, that was all creativity spurred on by great books and movies and shows and things like that, that I enjoyed when I was younger and still do. Cool. Now, what, who, was there a particular artist that was a, a big, uh, inspiration or, uh, encouragement to you? <laughs> Gosh, that's a, I mean, early on, uh, I don't know, um, I think I was I was motivated by uh, different uh, animators. I think more back then, and and animated uh, movies uh, and the styles that they had. I, I'm trying to think if there were particular artists that I followed. I don't think there were that many uh, uh, back then. Uh, so, like, I, I was a huge fan of of Don Bluth films uh, back back in the day. Secret of Nim. I, I loved uh, Land Before Time, and I remember seeing the original before there were seventy. Uh, I remember seeing the the original in the theaters, and that I just came home and just was drawing dinosaurs, and and loved the style of of Don Bluth and his animators, and uh, an American Tale, things like that. I mean, I, I, certainly Disney animated films. Uh, but that I think that was my I think I I, I intended 
at an early age, I, I thought maybe the, the thing to do would be an, a, an animator if I could. Um, so that was probably the stuff that inspired me the most. I, I looked at comics and stuff when I was growing up as well, but uh, I wasn't very uh, thorough. I was actually, it's funny, I, I was involved in games and, and stuff quite early, but then kind of forgot. I mean, I've always been interested, but kind of forgot those roots uh, a lot during my early career but uh i mean i was i remember i had the art of dragon lance book with me often uh i was reading dragon lance and so those artists uh, larry elmore and others uh were, were huge inspirations back then too but uh, yeah i don't i don't know if there was a consistent or you know i don't know i, I don't think i knew exactly what i was going to do with with art at the time so i was inspired by lots of different things okay cool my next question is kind of a two-parter, but uh, the first part is, what, what was the very first game, be it board game, video game, whatever it was, that that, that you uh, supplied art for? And the second part of that is, what's, what did it feel like to be able to see your art uh, being uh, showcased like that? And, and, and did you think back then it was like that, that it was going to open up a whole new realm of uh, possibilities to you um that's a good question uh i I think when i was first so i mean when i I went to college i i again i didn't i didn't always know where i was headed when i got to college i i I discovered concept art for video games for film things like that that that's where and then my direction went that way working for games uh, i mean eventually i did work for for video games, but for, for board games and, uh, card games and, and, and such, uh, that was something that just kind of came about l- a little bit later on as I was developing my freelance career on the side. It was actually, I was doing a lot of stuff with, with card games. Um, n- none of the big names, but as an illustrator, you know, freelance illustrator, uh, there's kind of a hierarchy of, of of companies and and a lot of us just kind of go go through you know what's the word uh, uh go through the ranks of of different game companies so i mean some of the first games that i worked on uh, i don't know if i ever saw them but I, I worked on the legend of the five rings at one point um i worked uh for uh, game of thrones card game uh through fantasy flight uh, lots of lots of just random card stuff, but 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 for the longest time it was just, you know, I was just an artist that could that could do the job. Uh, <clears throat> it wasn't like I, I mean, I, my my portfolio was competent enough, and so anyway, sorry. Long story short, you know, I was doing a lot of card stuff when I was first freelancing, but it was it was not like it was a defined style that I had. Uh, it was just I had to work in the way they they worked for their games specifically. And, uh, so it was neat to see when those things would come out, when those games would come out, but often I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know when they came out. And I'm also not a huge, uh, like trading card game player. Uh, and so I didn't, I didn't play them a lot. And so I wasn't, it really kind of wasn't my, my thing. So my first games, you know, first, my first, uh, intro into doing work for the gaming industry was not some of my favorite stuff. Uh, but I is one of the first games that I did most of the artwork for was through my contacts with um, uh, Fantasy Flight. Uh, I, I still have a good uh, friendship with with uh, many of the guys there, and so I, I, some of the first things I did was Descent. Uh, I did I did uh, covers for Descent, um, and then later on, I think the biggest step forward in in games for me was um mission red planet ah, okay. uh, that was through uh the, the reboot of mission red planet um that's one of uh bruno Feduti's games and uh and then i jumped from there a short time later did the cover and the the card art for that and then later on i did uh, the reboot of citadels again through fantasy flight but those were the first two, and then there was kind of a long break there as well between games, and and I I really didn't even think of of, of board games as a as a as an a serious option for work until sometime later. 
But those are some of the first ones. Sorry, that was a really long-winded answer to a very oh, simple no. question. That's good. That's good. That, uh, I mean, uh, d- d- throw- d- Sorry, I, I would the, say definitely Mission Red Planet. That was the first time that uh, that I, I, you know, I got my copy of, of the, the contributors' copy of, of of the game, and I was very excited about that. That was really neat to see, you know, the characters in the box. You know, the box art is uh, I, the box design is really nice, and the the art uh, uh, played well on the on the box, and so I was. I was pretty excited about that when that came out. That's neat. Yeah, uh, people people are definitely interested in, in hearing sort of like the, the the backstory or the director's commentary to the DVD hmm. type of thing. You know, <laughs> sure. So, but uh, so when uh, when these companies are, uh, approach you, I mean, uh, I'm I'm thinking there there there's something at least about your style, flavor of art that appeals to them that thinks that okay, well that 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 I think. They think though that that will lend itself to the I guess the theme or what they're looking for uh, graphically. So is is how, how much of I guess the, the the back and forth between you and the company that you have to kind of eh, how much do you adapt to their what they need mm. and and still be able to put your sort of like your signature style into the art. Um, it's, it's more and more these days. Certainly it's, it's, it's more where I get to, you know, they're, they're, they're picking me for the, the, the style of work that I already do. And they've, and they've seen, uh, certainly in the more, you know, most recently that's, that's been the case. Um, you know, I, my relationship with, with fantasy flight was an interesting one at, you know, kind of as a good to backstory to some of how that works. Uh, you know, when I was working for them, uh, you know, ten years ago, um, I was uh, I was doing. You know, like I mentioned before, I was just another artist among dozens of artists that were contributing to a certain thing, and it really wasn't anything about me at all, for sure. Uh, I, I could just, you know, do a cup of art, and the art directors would be would get the art that they need, and and they move forward. Uh, eventually, uh, I I went to Fantasy Flight, and the art directors there that are great guys, and and I had gotten to know them well, and. I had at one point just kind of said, I, you know, I'm, this isn't, I think it was more partly about financial stuff because uh, some, some times card art can be a little, they don't pay as well uh, at different times. And I, I think I went to them and just said, okay, I, I can't really do card art anymore. Work is, is busy enough that, you know, I, I need to, you know, make this a little bit more worthwhile. And, and they, you know, they have particular styles that they're going for. And so eventually, you know, work with, with a lot of companies slowed down for a little bit because I wasn't interested in as much in just being one among, a, you know, a hundred different artists just throwing stuff into a pile. And, but eventually they were, they would start to look for things that would fit my sensibilities. And so Mission Red Planet was very specifically uh, meant uh, that they came to me specifically for my style for that a little bit more whimsical style. Uh, Citadels was the same. Uh, um, Everdell was one that was was very similar. Um, I I had met them and they I had communicated with them at a Gen Con at one point and and they had seen my work and and then they came to me and were very trusting of uh, of my, my approach to the art and so they you know they were. The game salute with Everdell. They were definitely the the best. You know, they've been very very awesome to work with because they just were. I kind of did some work ahead of time, not for the project, but it was just kind of send some stuff uh, their way that was like, hey, this is the, I think we should make this work, and and I'd send them some drawings of some stuff that that would relate to Everdell, and and I think that helped uh, uh, build some confidence and for them and me and and you know as, almost as soon as we started to go they were just they just let me run with it uh and and so i was able to world build and 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 illustrate with with a lot of freedom um and now uh definitely everdell was was definitely one that uh that has allowed me to to be exposed to other people more more companies and now it's been very wonderful there's companies coming to me and just saying uh you know we want you to we want you to figure out 
the whole style for for this thing and and your style works so just run with it and I've, I've even had people approach me and say you know let, let's you know if you've got a world that you're creating and you want to illustrate it and you get to decide we'll make a game around it which is very wow. kind and flattering and <laughs> but definitely over time the freedom has become more has, has been uh, more opportunities for freedom as I've, as I've had more experience. That, that, that's wild. I mean, it just, just shows that, uh, yeah, when, when you're good at something, uh, so, sometimes all, all it takes is that one hitting something, one thing out of the park, and then it's like, I, I'm, I may not know his name, but the guy who did the order in Everdale, I want him. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's been a, uh, it certainly has been a, and and it's it was such a it's been such a fun project to work on and it continues you know we're, we're we've got Pearl Brook the expansion going out and I'm still working on art for that and will be for for another month, um, but it's just such a fun world it, it honestly like that 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 game itself uh, will be hard to match uh, for me uh, just because it's uh, I'm I'm a sucker for cute critters and and. And the direction that they let me take it uh, has been so much fun. So it's uh, it's been a really been a really neat experience for that. Yeah, just how much how much uh, research, if uh, if any, do you put into like uh, nature and animal bio- biology and stuff like that to make those things accurate? Uh, well, for every card I work on, I do I, I'll, I'll do research uh, on it. Um, I. Uh, you know, not to the extent that I, I mean, I, you know, it would, the concept artist side of me would, would, would love the opportunity to just spend some time understanding, you know, every part of, of, you know, what a mouse, you know, how a mouse works and, and, uh, you know, just for the sake of learning that and, and putting it in the back of my memory and, and for something to draw on later on. But, uh, you know, for for the most part, it, I'm I'll do a, a I'll do a, a sketch ahead of time for all of the for every card that I do. In, in the case of Everdell, for every character and every environment that I did, you know, I'm, I'm doing some sketches ahead of time, and and then at that point, it's kind of finding the the. It's more about finding research of okay, I, I've got this fox. You know, one of my favorite characters is the ranger in uh, in Everdell, and. And I posed this fox, you know, in a robe, you know, a cloak, uh, in a dark forest, and that was what I had in my head for the at the sketch phase. I got that approved, and then at that point, it's it's facilitating the the research is facilitating finishing that piece. So, you know, I I know what direction you know the the fox is looking. So I'm I'm looking for examples of of you know reference so I can you know. I can I can understand the way the fox would look at this at this stage of, of things you know in, in this particular pose and I'm I'm looking at cloaks to 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 see how the folds would fall and things like that but a lot of it you know still is just made up by me and faking it um, and, and and also on the side of things the way I work again it's a it's a concept art side of things uh, it plays a a little part in my illustration work is I, I'm often also gathering reference for for texture, you know, elements that I might have in my pieces. So sometimes I'll drop in photo elements into my pictures just so I have some things. So I might I might grab some fur, you know, I, I have lots of a large library of, of photos that I've gathered, photos I've taken, photos I've purchased, photos I've found. And uh, biologic, you know, uh, animal photos and things like that as well. So if I'm working on a particular animal and it's got a, you know, a unique texture to it or something like that, I'll often go in those and I'll grab something and I'll, I'll, I'll take a little piece and I'll put it in there, in, into my piece and work over it just because it, it's got the realism and the, the the feel that I'm looking for, but that that I'm I may not be able to mimic, you know, I I, I could if I spent a whole lot more time, but when I've got to get an illustration done every, you know, day and a half. Uh, then I've I've got to work fast. So, uh, so sorry. Lots of research put in for these, but not not to the to the same level as you know a a scientific illustrator would put into uh, you know putting something in a textbook or something like that. It's it's more just to 
to facilitate the art itself right at the moment. Now, one of the cool things I like about the the, the Everdale art is you got these little uh, I don't know to call them Easter eggs because uh, I mean they're there in plain sight. You just have to really look close to to to, uh, to see it. But uh, it's like for some of the uh, construction cards, you have whatever critter can ha- you know live in that thing. You have that critters in the background or somewhere in there, and then on that corresponding critter uh you have that particular location or construction either in the background or he, he's actually you know inside that location so it's it, it's a neat neat tie-in of of, of uh th- those two types of cars and how they play out yeah that was fun we, we, we enjoyed doing that and that was and that was definitely a mandate for the design at the at the beginning on you know from the onset they they said that was something that was important to them and <clears throat> and so and, and the game mechanics, you know, are important for that. So, I mean, it, there's there's plenty of graphic design elements in the game that that tell that anyway. But to, to have that in the art was a nice perk, and so they they asked for that ahead of time, and so that was something we we tried to do, and that was fun. It was, uh, yeah. At first, we were we were going to make them even more hidden, but uh, I think in the end, we we thought it would be best to to make them pretty clear. Everdell has certainly sparked a lot of additional work for me. Um, and uh and i've already started you know i've already finished there's there's a uh, the river that's coming out by days of wonder uh, I, I just finished and it's completely unrelated to to anything critter like um i i think uh, fortunately uh, people have been interested in having me do work but nobody's i mean there's nothing anything like ever dealt that i'm going to be doing in the near future except for them if i you know if we're able to continue mm-hmm. so uh, it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like I'm being typecast uh, as the critter guy, uh, but uh, but I, I certainly I certainly enjoy doing it. Like I said, it's this is the stuff. Like it was the it was a really a wonderful project because I was drawing mice and I was a, a Red Wall fan since I was a kid and Secret of Nim fan and all these sort of things. I, I was drawing these characters decades before everdell came out it was just a, a new opportunity that fit perfectly for me so okay That's but i'm excited the, the the all of next year is i'm there are some fantastic projects that i'm really excited that i am going to be a part of that uh that will be announced uh, uh next year um but that i think will again be very different than what I've been doing previously. I have my own projects and, and partnerships that I'm working on with other game designers that I'm extremely excited about and they're not uh, in any way related to these, but I hope that they'll, I hope people will have the kind of the same excitement for it too. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think so. When Back when I was a teenager, I used to take uh, art lessons and I probably did oils. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the, the the artist in me wants to ask: Is is there a particular medium that that uh, you really drawn to or do most with? Uh, be it you know uh, pencil or pastel or oils or ink or anything like that, watercolor. Uh, you know, all of the work I do now is 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 a hundred percent digital. So um, so none of the work for Everdell or any of the board games that I've worked on, I haven't done. Uh, anything traditionally in a long time professional wise uh, for me personally uh, I, I don't get to, to work in traditional medium as much as I would love to uh, as, as often as I should uh, but I always have a sketchbook with me wherever I go and I'm always doodling in that um, so pencil and paper for sure gets the most mileage on, on my end but uh, I've always been uh, I've always been partial to uh, to gouache. So if I'm ever going to go and paint anything, uh, just for fun for myself, if I go out and paint landscapes or, you know, just paint what I see, uh, out, uh, outside or anything like that, I, I've got a little gouache set that I work okay. with, which is not a medium many people work with, but it's a, it's a really cool medium and I like it a lot. So, um, but I, I still have, I still have all the paints I've, I used from school and things like that, but I, I haven't had the the privilege of working traditionally professionally for a very long time. 
I, I wish, that, you know, it's such a funny thing that, that we, I mean, I, I was trained traditionally. I didn't work digitally at all uh, until like my senior year of college. Um, and so I've, and then I, I had a mural painting business throughout college uh, to, uh, as I was taking care of a family and, uh, and working obviously traditional there i'm i'm a huge fan and most of my favorite artists are are traditional artists um and it's funny and within the community of of artists particularly digital artists there's i I don't know if it's a huge discussion or debate but but there, there there is there is a discussion about what is better digital and traditional i think most people would say uh, you know, if they could have their druthers, they'd, they'd be working traditionally. They could hold on to this. They have something in their hand. There's something so much more personal about working traditionally, and I miss that for sure. But uh, it's just it's just the, the demands of of the projects require speed most of the time, and, and, and really there isn't anything faster than, than working digitally. So yeah. that's what I'm stuck with. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> and, you're, and you're good at it. So. Well, thank you. Well, hey, if, uh, thank you so much, Andrew. Now, if people want to find out more uh, about you, your art, uh, check out your portfolio, uh, any projects you're doing, where, where can they go? Sure. The best, uh, I mean, I'm on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Um, I, uh, I, I have a newsletter that, uh, uh, that I, I run through my uh, website, bosleyart.com. Um, that's where people are going to see a little bit more about either the projects that are coming up for clients, uh, other studios or the stuff that I'm working on personally that, uh, that will be coming up. Um, but definitely I, I'm posting to all those social media outlets. Um, but it definitely, uh, I think that my website is where I I'd recommend for people who want to keep most up to date and not just get a scattering of random things. Uh, that's that's a little bit more <laughs> concise and clear about what's going on in in the art uh, that I'm doing. So yeah, bosleyart.com would be the best. All right, and definitely we'll have a link to those in the show notes of this episode. Well, Andrew, before we let you go, we have like a little, uh, you know, it's just a little trivial game that we like to play with our guest uh, called the Mega Meeple Rapid Fire Round. So if you're up to that. I'm ready. All right. Now, I I, 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 usually, I have like a list of like 100 things that I just kind of pick off <laughs> when I have. But f- for you, I, I custom tailored this one. Oh, boy. Uh, so let, let's, let's see how we do. Okay. I'm going to sound like an idiot, I'm sure. Go uh, ahead. I'm ready, though. All right. First off, detailed or abstract? Uh, my heart says abstract, but uh, yeah, so I'll go with that. All right. Uh, drawings or paintings? Uh, drawings. All right. Uh, board games or video games? Board games. All right. Uh, sci-fi or fantasy? Fantasy. And the last one, pen or pencil? Pencil. Okay. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Andrew, thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, definitely uh, check out uh, his uh, artwork on Everdale, and uh, you know, get, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you out there have a copy of Everdale. Just uh, take that box out and just uh, admire the artwork on it. <laughs> and uh, while you're at it, uh, you know, hey, you know, if you're playing Ghost Recon or Assassin's Creed or Rainbow Six or anything like those, uh, yeah, you just heard from the guy who uh, supplied some of the art on that. So. But thank you so much, Andrew, and uh, you take care. Thank you. I appreciate uh, the time. All righty. Well, thank you again for smashing that download button and listening in. Uh, You want to come back next week while my guest is going to be uh, Raven Tales. Uh, They're going to be talking about uh, their brand new Kickstarter, Wardens. Uh, It's it's been making some... uh, Quite a few tidal waves uh, here on social media. So uh, there's been a lot of excitement. So they're going to be my guest next week to talk about that game and that Kickstarter. So you want to tune in for that. And again, uh, don't forget to go to the uh, website, www.themegameeple.com and follow us on the uh, social media stuffs. 
and uh, subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel and the podcast and iTunes and all that other stuff. And again, uh, just tell uh, all your friends about the Mega Meeple. Spread the word. I appreciate that very much as well. Thank you so much for listening. And we will see you next week. Until then, we'll see you at the gaming table.